Hey, it's Kenny from the Northwest Grains Foundation. On today's episode of Salish Sea Fresh, we'll learn about oyster restoration from biologists, visit the thriving Olympia oyster beds in Fidalgo Bay, and hear about Taylor Shellfish Farm's commitment to Salish Sea restoration. Oh yeah, and at the end of the day, there'll be paella. Neil, thanks for being here. Uh, yeah, pre appreciate awesome. you taking the time to, you know, have this Zoom interview. Yeah, and a life via Zoom. I'm doing, I'm doing some field work later, so I don't. Know nice. That's good though. It's got to be, it's got to be invigorating, right? It's yeah. so nice to be. Able, yeah, I miss these. Are the first couple of days I've been in the office for seven weeks, something like that. Yeah, yeah. This is the uh, second time yeah. I've been here in yeah. two months. Cool. Well, yeah. Well, let's just let's just get down to it. So, what is unique and important about the Olympia oyster? You know, why is it a species that we should prioritize recovering in the Salish Sea? While Olympia oysters are still found across Puget Sound and the Salish Sea, for the most part, that habitat is gone. Yeah. That environment is gone. So, last year, almost exactly a year ago, we spread 120 bags of shell. We had volunteers come out, MRC members, Fish and Wildlife helped me select uh, sort of sites. And then I went back in October and found that a lot of that shell had caught baby oysters. That's great. Um, oysters ranging from about as small as you could see, like two, three millimeters to the size of a quarter, um, which was just awesome. The ultimate goal of restoration isn't to continually be like, oh, we got to spread shell again this year. Okay. It's Oh, hey, we get to go out and do a population survey. And I think it's the Skagit MRC has found at this great restoration project with millions of oysters on it. Those Olympias aren't settling just on old on Pacific shell you've set out. They're settling on old Olympia shell. Right. And you end up recreating that biogenic habitat. Those 4.8 million that Skagit have right now, you're going to start seeing 4.8 million numbers like that pop up in other parts of the Sailor Sea. Just a matter of yeah. time. Just a matter of time and effort. It's just great to see these 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 critters come back because they're cool. And um, I really like Olympia oysters. <laughs> well, originally, uh, Puget Sound Restoration Fund and Fish and Wildlife wanted to start the Olympia oyster restoration in North Puget Sound, where they're pretty much were wiped out way back when. It used to be thousands of acres up here, according to Grady Blake at Fish and Wildlife, who's done a lot of historical research. And those were essentially all gone. So Bill Taylor and Betsy Peabody looked at a variety of areas to put out seed and see if you can start getting some restoration. They provided sea oysters and Skagit Marine Resource Committee with myself at the lead and working with a lot of great volunteers started monitoring the results. We've been doing that since 2002 and the population has gradually grown as you get natural spawning, larvae put into the water column, the larvae swimming around and settling in a variety of places. What we've seen over here was an enhancement plot. We put out Pacific oyster shell yeah. so they could settle on the shell. Right. Over here you see some little humps out there. Yeah. Those are bags of oyster shell. They were put out by the Swinomish tribe. Oh, yeah. And now what we've got here is what I would call a gull enhancement plot. Right. Gulls are digging up clams. They take them up in the air, drop them, the clams break, right. and then they can eat what's inside. And in so doing, they scatter shell around on the mud flats, and that's what right. the uh, lumpy oysters are using for settlement in this area. I'm gonna go, uh-oh, I think I'm stuck. <laughs> kind of twist. Twist. Like twist that. And, and pull your heel up. There you go. <laughs> there you go. Yeah, nice. you don't want to stand in one place too long. Technically, the whole way the regulation was written is that Olympia oysters could, if they were over two and a half inches, could be harvested, but they don't really, they don't grow to that, so it kind of abs abstains them from being able to be harvested. Right, exactly. The restoration hasn't been for harvest purposes. It's been for habitat and water quality purposes. But right. If they ever got plentiful enough that they could open them for harvest, then they would essentially have to drop the size limit for oysters down right. to say an inch and a half. As it turns out, they're doing great here. Matter of yeah. fact, yeah. Um, it's been commented 
that um, the oysters growing in Fidalgo Bay get bigger than other areas really? of the sea. And it's primarily been due to the enhancement beds. Right. That's, that's where the bulk of the three million are, are these in the Pacific Oyster enhancement right. beds. So to the collaboration, partnership, and volunteer work of, of, of the people and the gulls. Boots in the mud. Get yep. stuck in the mud. <laughs> yep, that's what happened, was happening to me today. I honestly thought I was going in over there. Yeah, yeah it's getting getting more of a challenge each year. Because of... Why because I'm why? old. Oh. <laughs> old and worn out. <laughs> I thought you were talking about the mud in general. <laughs> The Olympia, it is the only native oyster to this stretch of the west coast. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, keeping our native species, uh, native flora and fauna is super important. The biology here is so unique. Right. Uh, the flavor of those oysters, the smell, the aroma, the flavors that are unlocked as you chew, just give me this. They give me this landscape every time I eat one. So right. I just think it's cool that Taylor has a commitment to restoration efforts because they want to make the area that y'all farm at a better place. We basically bring them from the very beginning of their existence to the table. You know, from the hatchery uh, where we take our brood stock and we create the animals uh, right up through our nursery, our flupsy system, right out to the oyster bars that they go to, the plant that they're processed in, then to the delivery trucks, to the restaurants that you're eating them at, or to your door if you go online and order them. TaylorShellfishFarms.com and click on the online store and they'll ship them right to you. That's right. Yeah. yeah. Maybe you'll even be in that van. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. We'll see. Yeah. yeah. I'll That's have my mask on. That's right. That's right. <laughs>this stage of the paella process, we have our mirepoix, which is celery, carrot, onion, all diced up. We cook that in a lot of um, nice Spanish olive oil and with a little saffron, smoked paprika. Smell good. Smell real good. There's something so much more fun about cooking with fire and so much more appealing. It just, it feels more real than cooking with my uh, convection oven in my apartment or my uh, electric stove. <laughs> Look at this guy, man. These the same thing? These the Cockles, yep. Yeah. These are actually uh, grown right here in Samish Bay. Nice. Is there a specific reason in, in terms of uh, like a cooking reason as to why to arrange them differently or is it just for presentation? Yeah, it's just, I mean, presentation, but you also want to give it enough to steam open. Now these are side stripe prongs. Are they pretty sweet? They yeah, like they're, they're very really sweet. Aren't you one? Oh yeah. Is there a special, you have a special way to pull off the tail then kind of like a crayfish? And Just like a crayfish, yeah. I like suck the juice out of the head, same kind of deal. Where Ooh, all the flavor good. is. All the sweet flavors in there. Yeah, that's fantastic. These are always. These are always. Man, you're pro with the shucking. Look at that. You can have one of those contests, I'm actually a little man. rusty because we, uh, <laughs> We haven't been shucking here for a while. I feel like in general, the American diet is not really focused on seafood at all. It's not, it's a shame, really. I mean, I think that at some point, the food, the food scenario got a little skewed towards, you know, beef, ch chicken, pork. Right. We forgot about being nourished from all the delicious critters that are out in the oceans. Yeah. You know, I think the ocean, it, it's like this mystery, right? Yeah. <laughs> It's this dark space out off there. They're cracking you know, down kinda, there, man. It's kind of scary, Yeah. right? Yeah. Whereas you can see a cow, you can see a chicken, you can see, you know, how a pig grows. Right. It's a little bit more familiar because we're terrestrial animals. Sure. Bottoms up. Bottoms up. That's nice. Just kind of funny how a little bit of green kind of makes makes it pop. If only we all use fresh herbs. That's frequently. something that every chef can do. Oh, salud, salud. That's cool. That's cool. Thanks, guys. Look at that. Look at that work. Jeez, it almost makes it all worth it. We go for this muscle first. I'm gonna get this cockle. I'm gonna, actually, I'm gonna that. combo it with the with the cockle and the muscle. You're gonna go cockle muscle. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. You get an Olympia? 
I haven't gotten a limpy yet. I got a muscle in here. I got a cockle I just had. I'm trying to see if I got an Olympia over here. Actually, I don't know. This might be Olympia free plate until now. Not bad today, huh? Not bad. Not a bad day. Could be worse. Huh? Not a bad day on the farm. Thank you, Taylor Shellfish. Thank you, Taylor. Mm -hmm. Cool. Mm -hmm. And some sandwich bay. Yeah, thank you, guys. Mm -hmm. Great. This is the first meal I've had with other people in three months. <laughs> There's a shell right there. Feels weird, doesn't it? Feels good. Sitting down. <laughs>